it's Shake and Bacon. You're about to see the color blue, but in a way that you've never seen it before, because I created it. Keep your head still and focus on staring at the bacon strip in the center of the circle. The way our eyes and brain process color information can be subjective and isn't always the most accurate. However, this illusion should enable you to observe two rare hues of blue in their most saturated forms. Now close your eyes tightly and you should see a glowing orb that is one half true cyan and one half true blue. Hey, can I get some H2O? Yeah, I got you. Here you go. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'll take some H2O, too. Thanks. This is possibly the rarest thing to ever happen in a video game. In 2013, user Dota Teabag was speedrunning Super Mario 64 on the console. In the level TikTok Clock, he suddenly upwarps onto a higher platform. What the? Did you get invisible walls? What? Please say you got invisible No, that was the craziest thing I've ever seen, though. The move shaves off a few seconds, and it seems like a newly discovered glitch in the game that could give speedrunners an edge. User Panincook12 put out a $1,000 bounty for anyone who could replicate the upwarp. But so far, after six years, no one has been able to. The best explanation anyone can come up with is that a cosmic ray caused the glitch. It's been shown that a single bit flip in the first bite of Mario's height coordinate could have caused the effect. On the main level, the bite was 11000101, but if you flip the last one to a zero, it changes his vertical position. And just by chance, this new height coincides with the higher floor. Pan and Cook 12 wrote a script to manually flip the bit at the right moment and was able to achieve the same upwarp. This is a particularly visible bit flip, but the truth is, cosmic rays are triggering bit flips all the time. For this video, I'm just going to be doing something that I find fun, and all I need is some ammonium dichromate. Now, I just need to pour some into a dish, and light it on fire. It's sometimes a bit hard to get started, but it's eventually able to keep going on its own. What's happening here is a decomposition reaction where the ammonium dichromate is chemically falling apart. As it does this, it turns into green chromium oxide and it produces a bunch of nitrogen gas and water vapor. At some point, it kind of starts looking like a little volcano and it also lets off a lot of heat. It then keeps going like this until all of the ammonium dichromate has reacted. It eventually finished and I now have a super puffy pile of chromium oxide, which isn't very useful. What's kind of fun though, is to take a small amount of it, and heat it using a blowtorch. Then, if I drop it into a flask full of ammonia gas, it makes a bunch of sparks, which kind of look like fireflies. This is a skull from a marlin, a giant predatory- Wait, 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 what's this? What, what is this? See this strange ball in its eye? This is called a scleral ring. It's an eye bone. Notice how it's the perfect shape to fit inside an eyeball. It supports the eye from the intense water pressure it experiences while the marlin swims in the ocean. So marlins have bones in their eyeballs. I don't want to freak you out, but I've been doing some reading lately. I'm pretty sure this thing's fucking round, brother. They tell you it's flat, and you'll fall off if you go off the side. But they don't want you to know if you just keep going, you go all the way around, and you sneak up behind. Of course, the Pope doesn't want you to know that, because you're not going to pay your tithes if the world's round. There's something on the other half of it that they don't want us to see. You know, that's probably where they keep all their money, or like, the hottest girls. They're making money off it somehow, you know? There's, there's... There's ducats changing hands, I can smell it. No, 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 obviously the sun rotates around the earth. Look, I'm not crazy. What's inside of it then? Well, you know, I don't know. Probably molten rock or ghosts. Oh, that's fine, no, no, no. You wanna be a sheep, that's fine. Bah, you know? Go, go. Catch up to the flock, you're getting lost. 
You don't want to. You don't want to walk with the lone wolf. a lot of products to try to make, like unbreakable glasses. Are they actually unbreakable? Nobody has ever been able to explain this strange object. Don't look at me like that. You knew it was going to be me. Well, let's have a little look at that thing that you say nobody can explain. A group of oil drillers discovered it while they were 300 feet underground. Is there an explanation as to how that doll was that deep in the earth? Ah, this is called the Nampa figurine, or the Nampa stone doll. And I'm glad he asked, because there is an explanation as to how it got there. As he correctly states, the Nampa doll was discovered in 1889 when some people were drilling a well in a layer of sediment which was deposited between the Pliocene and Pleistocene epoch, which creationists have used to make the claim that this doll is 2 million years old. It is made of fired clay and is about 35 millimeters long. I know the metric system is scary, so here it is compared to an American coin. So we know that the artifact itself is genuine. Now, while the very end of the drill bit was 300 feet in the ground, we have no idea where this figurine came from in that 300 foot span. The creationist rhetoric surrounding this doll, which was really drilled home by creationist Michael Cremo, who is a notorious pseudoscientist, by the way, would have you believe that the doll was actually found at that depth of 300 feet. But spoilers, it probably wasn't. Michael Cremo and others who perpetuate this conspiracy use one little piece of language which will trick their audience into thinking that this doll is from 300 feet in the ground. And that is the claim that it was brought up in a core sample when the drilling was being done. Now, if it had been brought up in a core sample, this would rock the world of archaeology, haha. Ha. This being because the doll would have had to have been deposited before that rock was formed. The doll was actually found as liquid sand was being pumped out of the well, meaning that it is impossible to determine where it was in this 300 foot span. Due to the agitation of the sediments, this tiny little figurine could have been washed around anywhere from 300 feet in the ground to 3 centimeters in the ground. In fact, this conspiracy was so easy to see through that it was busted in the 1800s, to the point where American geologist John Wesley Powell actually reviewed the find, and he immediately recognized it as a clay toy created by the Pocatello people who lived nearby. He even presented the doll to multiple Pocatello people, and they all agreed that it was probably something that was created by somebody from their group. And then a kid lost it somewhere, and it ended up in the dirt and then it got pumped out of the dirt because that's what happens when you pump the dirt out. So Cole with the facts. I know that you want to have a cool snappy title but Cole stick to the facts because when you spread stuff like this you get comments like this and if you're making a space where comments like this can thrive we're gonna have a bit of an issue. You know I'm half tempted to just make like little 10 minute long pseudo-archaeology segments on YouTube. I feel like that would be a pretty cool series. I'm still waiting on some people to submit their sections for the Ancient Rome video, so I'm looking for something to do in the meantime. Maybe I'll make a little pseudo-archaeology video as a little thank you for your patience. I'd like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. As always, my various social medias are linked in my bio. Remember to stay curious, stay inquisitive, and most importantly, remember that we have been lied to and controlled for a very long time.